Good morning. Are Christian congregations islands in God's plan? Today we're reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. Therefore, when we could no longer endure it, we thought it good to be left in Athens alone and sent Timothy, our brother and minister of God, and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ, to establish you and encourage you concerning your faith that no one should be shaken by these afflictions, for you yourselves know that we were appointed to this. For in fact, we told you before, when we were with you, that we would suffer tribulation, just as it happened, and you know. For this reason, when I could no longer endure it, I sent to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter had tempted you, and our labor might be in vain. So Paul is in Corinth now. He's writing back to Thessalonica hasn't heard back for a while, and very concerned about how things might be at that church. In Paul's world, it was not only a world of tribulation and trial and difficulty and challenges in the church, but there was also another thing, and that was a communication gap, at least compared to what we're used to today. Uh, to get communication from one place to another, you pretty much had to have somebody go there, somebody personally travel. Often, the ones that would travel would carry a letter. And this is how, no doubt, this is how these letters to the Thessalonians and so on in the New Testament, these different letters, arrive back and forth to the different churches is because somebody is carrying. There's not a mail truck. Somebody is actually traveling through and delivering, and then often they would gather around while they read the epistle. They read the letter to them. So they haven't heard from Thessalonica for a while, and Paul's very concerned because they had a lot of challenges in that city. So finally, they send Timothy to find out what might be happening there. The point to highlight here is, as it says in the text, Paul sent to know your faith. What was going on? So Timothy goes. Now, the churches were networked together there, and uh, some people have this idea that maybe they were just lone congregations. You know, each congregation is the lone ranger in its place, just kind of dangling out there, hanging out there, trying to do the right thing. But the churches were actually quite networked together, the workers, often the same workers like Timothy and Silas and, and Paul and the different workers, often traveled back and forth to the different churches. And so they were networked together by people, apostles and workers that would actually physically go there and see what was going on and work and, and build up their faith. So this is how the churches were tuned up. They were indeed quite networked together, even though it wasn't in the same kind of instantaneous communication we have today. Whenever there are humans, there's always kind of a risk of extreme independence. And there's humans involved in these churches, of course. But these churches are connected together, and they're looking out for the prosperity of each other. And that's an important feature. Sometimes today, maybe you feel like in your local church that, well, we're just so busy focused on our things. But we should actually have an interest in what's happening among the sisterhood of churches. We have sister churches, and we want all the churches to prosper. Wherever the Spirit of God is at work in hearts, there will be a care not only for your own congregation, but for the broader sisterhood of churches. And so Paul uh, often would go back over the ground where he had worked before and try to build up those and strengthen those churches all over again. And so it's natural that he's thinking about uh, the risks, the potential things that are happening in Thessalonica. So boom, sends Timothy there. And we'll talk tomorrow morning about the word that comes back. Let's keep this in mind, though, for now. The, of our sister churches, their prosperity is our prosperity. Their suffering is our suffering. Their toil is our toil. When, when they have something that brings joy, that should bring us joy too because we're all connected into the family of God. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you that the churches are connected together and we want that you will prosper our sister churches. Help us to have a care for the prosperity of, of our sister churches. Help us to not only pray for our own church, but also uh, not only our own local congregation, but also our sister churches scattered across the land, seeking to do your work in sometimes very challenging settings. Lord, please bless our sister churches. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So pray for your local church and also pray for the spiritual prosperity of your sister churches as well. God be with you today.